Folks, you are staring at a modded out tractor and there is something on this tractor, hint, hint, that you've never seen before. We'll tell you more about that later on. What you're looking at right here is something that I think the market has been clamoring for and Justin's coming out with it, serving a need. And you're gonna see these lines are completely exposed. And now part of that is I bought this tractor used and I think there is on our other uh, 1025R, there's a kind of a cheap plastic cover here that's held on with zip ties. I think there was one on this H120R or H120 loader at one point in time, but this is a heavy duty um, hydraulic line protection that we're gonna put on here. It's gonna have some holes on top. This is for like a, a third function bracket that you can put on there, mount on there too. Uh, this is, I mean, it's beefy, it's substantial, just like everything else that he builds. Now, what I told him to come out with, and he, and he is, He's coming out with it for the, the 3E series. Those loaders don't have anything. And back when I sold a lot of used tractors, I sold a ton of 3E series tractors and these lines were bent and mangled all the time. All right, so it's an easy area to do damage to, especially like with a grapple on there, you're in brush and everything else all the time. I'm excited to get this thing installed and show you guys what it's all about. So this is just going to go around the lines. It catches the tube on the ends here. And then you just put a U-bolt on each side. So this guard on the inside, it's not just sitting right, right on the lines. It's got these little grooves, these cutouts on these tabs that allow it just to sit right on the torque tube. And so they're just up just enough right above the hydraulic line so they're not smashing them down. I can tell this is a really difficult installation. Yeah, it's, it's a toughie. Yeah. So currently we're selling these just as a line guard with the hardware, but we also have an option for a third function uh, mount, which would go here if you have a third function and want to mount the lines there. Uh, and currently these are cut out for one quarter inch bulkheads which I think is a pretty popular size on a lot of these uh, John Deere's. Um, but I need to hear also from customers whether they have half inch or yeah. whatnot, cause, because I can offer this in any size uh, bulkhead. So. Yep. Um, so that would just go here, followed by the nuts. Um, Take that off there. Yep. Thanks. And that offers I feel a lot of protection to the couplers themselves because a lot of them just come out the front and lowering and raising your loader can maybe do damage where this way, at least if you're lowering it down, it's protecting the lines and the couplings and everything there as well. Now is this offered like the other ones in green and black? Yes, so okay. this is the textured black and we also have the John Deere green. and maybe even yellow by custom request, but we're not stocking them. <laughs> so are you offering these um, for a lot of models in right now or just starting to fill out the line? So these are the first product uh, for the John Deere lineup in terms of hydraulic line guards. Uh, so this will cover the 1023, 1026, 1025, yep. and 2025. Gen 2. Generation Correct. two. Correct, yeah. yep. yeah. Gen 2, 2025. Basically um, the H120 loaders and the 120R loaders. Yes, yeah. correct. Okay. Um, they may also fit the uh, D120, but I have not confirmed that yet. Okay, so. yep. And in fact, Justin has one of these guards out of the Kubota that he brought over, his own L2501. So we're gonna take a look at that now. Not just that, but we're gonna show you something you've never seen before and all the other cool stuff he's done to it. Just wanted to show this to show that we also have some older generation John Deere um, models. So we tried to work our way through the current models and as we can, we work backward, um, mainly based on customer requests. If there's a lot of requests for a model, you know, that's what we'll focus on. But working backward a little bit, this is the 410 series. So 4, 4210, I believe up through 4710 uh, and a few different loader models. Um, as you notice, flanges everywhere. We can put them for strength. Um, and this, this particular model only requires drilling two holes as it uses the pivot bolts down below as the lower mounting holes. So if there's something you're looking for and we don't offer it, let us know. 
and we can get to it at some point if, if, it's, uh, if it's, there's enough demand for it. Hey folks, so we are gonna put a black grill guard, forget, is it going on the outside just like this? Yes. Yeah. On the 2038R today, all right? We've got black as a choice, matching John Deere green as a choice. All right, so we're gonna do this again. You've seen us do this before. We're gonna knock it out pretty quick here. Maybe 20 minutes, something like that. Maybe, right. maybe 15, maybe 10 minutes. It could be only just a couple minutes on camera, but we'll knock it out here real quick. See the dramatic difference that it makes. And reminder, when was that? A year and a half ago, something like that. One of these grill guards saved my 1025 hours of life. That tractor right there, there's actually a little dent right in this guard. It did its job protecting the front end of the machine. Let's get her done. This right here is all of the hardware that's needed, so not much to it. You're just drilling some holes on both sides here and then bolting the thing on. Justin, does this one have side guards for, as an option for this or no? No, but actually today I'm gonna do some work and get a scan of ah. the tractor um, 2025. Um, so we can make side guards okay. that are going to fit around this, but um, not quite yet. And okay. We'll also do. But that. they're coming. They're yeah. in development. They're coming. Yeah. <laughs> he does have side guards for some Kubotas. We put those on our Kubota M4. Um, are they on your L2501? Yes. Okay. Okay. And also, they, they were actually developed for John Deere, um, some of the three series, as a bolt-on, no drilling. Uh -huh. Okay. along with the front being no drilling, and we found that they also fit really well on Kubota. So they started with John Deere. Oh, sweet. Learn something new. Yeah. So obviously you're not the only guard company on the market. There's other folks out there doing it too, but your business is growing for good reason, right? Yep. I mean, you're full-time now. This is the first time you've been over here, I think, full-time. Yes. So it was kind of that part-time business, that side hustle, and, and look where it's come. Right. So what's setting 511 apart? Um, you know, I'd like to think that our quality is one of the major things that, that sets us apart. Uh, I believe we're the only company that's using laser to cut out all of our parts, all done on a CNC laser as well as a CNC press brake. And not that that may have any kind of functional um, type benefit, but it does look like a, a cleaner product. Uh, one of the things we like to do is try to make these look as factory as possible not some aftermarket guard bolted on. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a lot of customers say that, that these look like they came from the factory or they should come from the factory <laughs> like this. So that's one of the, the items. Um, another thing is powder coating. I'm not sure what our competitors do. Uh, I haven't seen other competitors or competitors advertise this, but we do five steps. We do a cleaning, a media blast to get the right profile on the surface to give a good adhesion to the, to the coats. Um, we outgas them to get rid of any oils and contaminants in the steel. And then we do a zinc primer layer, uh, powder coat as well, which acts as a sacrificial anode if you were to get a scratch, um, followed by the top coat. So there may be competitors doing that, but I haven't seen it advertised, so. You could certainly cut cost out by taking out a step or two there. Right, yep. <laughs> that sounds um, expensive and time consuming. Right, we like to have the, the most durable finish possible. I mean, these are meant to be abused basically. Another item is uh, flanges. So anywhere we can add a flange, for example, this is a, a side guard for a Kubota, but anytime you add a flange here, it just adds to the rigidity of the guard. Um, if this was just flat, you know, you could just push it right over, but each time there's a bend, it, it really adds rigidity, and that's how you get a lot of strength out of a you know, fairly thin piece of material, this being 11 gauge, but it's pretty much the standard for this type of product. So sure, we could make a more affordable product, a cheaper product, um, but is it gonna be functional? The number one thing is protecting your equipment. Um, one of the items is these cutouts. There's other guards out there that you can put a couple fingers through or whatever, this particular one has 13 millimeter cutouts. Um, so there's a little increased cost there uh, due to the laser time and whatnot, but we feel it results in 100% protection. So um, top to bottom coverage, flanges, smaller holes, that's what you're looking for in a product like this. So yeah, they're a little more expensive than some options, but we feel that there's value in it.
at the higher cost. So. Yeah, but you're talking about double the amount of steel that's on there too. Oh, yeah, if roughly not triple. Compared to, to some of the other guards that are out there. So right. yep. you would expect a higher cost to come along with that. And, and essentially that's just giving folks options. If they want the absolute cheapest, that may not be as thick as steel or have as robust of a design and protection, then right. more power to them. But if they want superior coverage, then they've got that option too. Yep, and uh, you know, I hate to see somebody try to save a buck by buying something that doesn't offer full coverage and then still incurring damage yeah, on the right. machine. That's, yep. Yep. And I've talked to many customers about some of the OEM options, uh, specifically on Kubota. And you know, they've, they've even told me I went to go pick up that part and I just left it there. It would, I could tell it wouldn't protect the equipment. Oh, wow. So hmm. that's what I like to tell people is, you know, I hate to see you buy something damage your equipment and then buy the more expensive product yeah. rather than just buying something that you know will protect right off the yeah, bat. It costs you more in the long run that way. Yeah, yep. there, I've seen some designs too where there's a cutout basically through the center to, hmm. I guess, get around the design of the factory guard. We try to avoid hmm. that type of thing at all costs along with some ornamental uh, letters, numbers, whatever. Every, all of that type of thing takes strength out of the guard and uh, it just makes it more susceptible. So number one is, is strength and protecting the equipment. Speaking of cutouts and um, strength and all that, the majority of our quality starts at the computer in the design phase. So, you know, right, from, right off the bat, we're trying to build in flanges, you know, small holes, make it look like it came from the factory and it just starts there. You know, we're, our main focus is not cost, it's how can we make this guard effective and, and make the customer feel like they have protection and are confident using it. Uh, so most of it starts there. Um, and then we go on from there and make it manufacturable to begin with. You know, some of this is very difficult with multiple bends and I'll share some guards we have that, that were very difficult to design, but that's where it all starts. And then our, our quality continues after that customer service the actual manufacturing and, and so on. So these two guards, this is for a 3R, that's a 4R. Both of these along with a few other John Deere models install without any drilling at all. Um, so this one, just wanted to show all the different bends. I'm sorry, wait, what? No drilling? Yeah, this one's no drilling. So they come from John Deere with holes here and here. Oh, sweet. Um, and then we utilize these here. That's awesome. Um, so really nice, not having to drill, but this is where some of the design gets pretty complicated, yeah. trying to fit it in to around their guard with both bends this way as well as this way. You did a good job on that. And then this 4R is the same thing. Um, John Deere does offer an upper, like a mesh, expanded metal type thing, but nothing for the lower. Um, so this is a two-piece guard, carriage bolts, all the hardware is included, but this is a no-drill application as well. Sweet. That piece, and then this piece under here actually folds forward and leaves essentially no gap here. Hmm. So you get all the extra coverage down here. No, no drilling as well. This just utilizes these holes back here. We are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. So folks, here we are, okay? This is Justin's personal Kubota L2501. Kind of a test machine, something for him to do all sorts of stuff with, see if it fits, see if it works. And there's a lot of things going on, all right? You might not even see them all here, but the first one is this little hunk down here and then a lot of other stuff too. But we're gonna have Justin tell you all about it because it's his baby, it's in development, it's not for sale yet. Correct. Wanna get your feedback on, this is an important thing, right? If we can dial it in, get it just the right way, is it worth pursuing? Should he shelve it? Let him know. Take it away. So hey, hang on. Hey, oh, no, hang on. I, yeah. 
you're forgiven for having that grapple on the front, okay? Apology yeah. accepted. I know that you weren't thinking properly when you got that grapple, but apology accepted. But carry on, carry on. This well, is really cool. That one's actually going to be for sale, but I got to admit, <laughs> I've got the latest and greatest EA grapple on order. They're so. good grapples. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so this new product we're talking about is a third function, but instead of being um, electrically controlled or electronically controlled through switches and solenoids, it's going to be a manual valve controlled um, third function, controlled by your foot. Um, when I was shopping for third function kits, every one of them was solenoid controlled with switches. And on a lot of the Facebook groups and some of the other tractor forums I'm on, people often were talking about failure of solenoids and switches and switches wear out and, and whatnot. Um, and being kind of the gearhead that I am, I wanted to try to develop something different, um, more reliable. Uh, so that's where I came up with this third function uh, manual. I used to have one up here to, to control my snow plow. Um, but you had to take your hand off the joystick. It was a really clean installation, but you had to take your hand away, which is absolutely, a, you know, that's not gonna work. So I've been developing this to go on the left side with a foot pedal. Um, there's a few selling points uh, that I'd like to mention, not only the lack of solenoids and electrical, and you also don't have to wire those things in. This is just all hydraulic installation. Um, is also the, the speed, you can control the speed just by feathering this slowly, fast. With an electrical one, it's wide open like a light switch. You hit it wide open, hit it again, close. So this gives you a little more control and uh, there's really not much of anything to go wrong with it, um, aside from maybe the internals of the valve itself wearing out. But that's the purpose of it. Uh, this will be a, a full kit once it's completely developed. Uh, it's very close right now, but I'm going to make some changes to the orientation of the foot pedal. Um, but this will be provided with everything you need, nuts, bolts, mounts, hoses, um, ways to secure the hoses, couplers up front, the whole nine yards. So basically plug and play, very quick installation. So I'm not sure if this is something that people are interested in, but I feel like it's a very, very good product that will solve some problems and we'd like to hear your input as well. Uh, if there's a lot of interest, then we will pursue this and uh, move forward with it. So I think really, you know, I mean, Justin said it well, but from another person's perspective, you know, I think there's always gonna be folks that say you can't beat a thumb control on a joystick, right? And this product isn't for them, but taking out the electrical side of it, it's all DIY too, right? So if you're just dealing with hooking up some hoses, routing them through, securing them. I mean, it doesn't get a lot easier than that. The price probably gonna be a lot cheaper than going to your Kubota dealer and having one, you know, an OEM version installed as well. So it saves you a trip there, saves you extra labor and trip charge and all that kind of stuff too. Even for folks that, you know, have a disability or handicap or don't have use of an arm or whatever it is, it gives another option there for those kinds of scenarios too. So I think that there's a lot of different applications where this could really, um, you know, be a big plus and it's com something completely different that's out there and uh, it's always good to have variety. So another product is this light bar um, and this came from me not being able to have my wraps up and pull into my barn. Uh, I have a shorter barn currently um, but I wanted light overhead because A with a loader and all that I don't even really use my headlights yeah. so I wanted light up high but wanted it up high all the time and I can't do that with the wraps up or I'd have to jump off the tractor and lower it down every time I pull in. So yep. this light bar fits both with the wraps up or down and always keeps it overhead. They're sold as a kit with just the, the uh, mounting structure or the mounting structure, the light, and then a harness that includes a relay and everything. This I have wired in directly to the ignition side of the key and um, works really well. Now, I think you've got individual mounts as well if you want to. Correct. I mean, so you can have something facing backwards, forward, that kind of thing, different setups available for different ROPS setups yep. as well? Uh, one and a half by three inch, two by three inch, and then two okay. by two, two and three eighths by two and three eighths. Basically any ROPS that's out there, we have a, 
a pod mount for it. And then the extra holes, you can actually mount rear facing lights on here if you wanted to. So you can have something facing forward up top so, or vice versa, you know, both right. directions at the same Sideways time. Sideways or? Yeah, 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 cool. So these are currently available, the light bar kit for the 01 series, uh, as well as the new, uh, the newer 02 series, but we're also developing ones for MX, 60 series, and uh, so on. Okay, cool. Okay, so we have three more things right here that we're looking at. We've got a line guard up here for the hydraulics on the torque tube. We've got the grill guards, and we've got the tie down down there. So tell us more about that, Justin. Uh, so the line guards uh, on this particular model, the O1s and the uh, new O2s with the 526 loader, the shape of this is kind of a pie shape. So we have to make this in a separate piece from the factory guard. So this basically bolts on in about a minute. You just take out the two bolts on, or the one bolt on each side, put the guard in place, replace the bolts. We also have uh, four or five other loader models that we make guards for, but in those, they just replace the, the guard from Kubota. Those typically just have a top portion and then the bottom of the lines are exposed. And based on that shape, we can just remove that guard, replace it with ours, which is a completely surrounds it, much thicker than the factory guard and uh, also installs without any drilling and uses existing hardware. Uh, so now you can also see the front grill guard, side grill guard. Um, this is actually one of the originals, so it doesn't have all the new features that we have on our newer guards, such as big long flanges and whatnot, um, but also the tie downs. These have been very popular, very hard to keep in stock. Um, probably the difference in ours versus some of the other ones on the market is one, the thickness, these are 3 8 thick steel. Um, bolt on without any drilling, they go between the brush guard and the frame. And these have uh, about a three and a quarter inch opening, so you can fit pretty much any type hook right through the tie down, bring it back and secure it whatever way you want. Um, so very flexible and very strong. We're also working on some for the rear um, just trying to make more of a common type, which may prove to be a challenge, but we will be coming up with at least the 01, 02 series rear tie downs very soon. And last but not least, back here, a homemade ballast box contraption. I figure you guys would want to see it because you guys love seeing the homemade stuff. So we got, what, a toolbox here of some kind that you fashioned in, and yep. what, 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 what do you got going on? Just a job box. Uh, I was at the local tractor supply place, and I thought, oh, I'm going to buy one of those, put some weight in it. Um, Fill full of concrete then? Yeah, so basically from here down, it's scrap steel topped off with concrete and then uh, smoothed it out, put plywood down and then some nice carpet um, just to hold whatever. You could probably even put a small chainsaw in here maybe. Yeah. But chains, tie downs, whatever, yeah. tools. It's like eight or 900 pounds, I think, That's somewhere in sweet. there. Yeah. Um, well, and you fashioned this whole mount for yep, it, right? Yeah. With some bracing on the inside and everything too? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Looks really cool. Nice work on that. Oh, thank you. Well, folks, you got to see all sorts of new stuff today, and so did I. I want to thank you, Justin, for coming out again. Nice to see you. Thanks for having Sounds me. Sounds like good business is going good. Yes, it's going very well. Yeah. Very good. You know, this guy's just running a, a mile a minute. Sounds like he is busy as can be, so I'm, I'm really happy to see that. And so you can check out the other videos. This is the third or fourth time now, something like that, even yeah. out here. So we hope to see you again. <laughs> Me too. You're welcome back anytime. Now, if you want to get more information on these products, go to Justin's website, 511designs.com. We'll have that up here on the screen down below in the description. You can find that stuff on our website too and get you right there. And of course, he's a Discount Club member. So that means you can use code GWT. You save 5% off of your order, ordering on Justin's website. He'll ship it out to you direct. And this stuff is packed well. We've shown you before, but he packs it. He takes pride in his work from beginning to end, and it shows when it shows up on your doorstep. Now for everything else, for the front end loader or the three point hitch, more than likely we can help you out. Go to goodworkstractors.com. If you enjoyed today's video, you wanna see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. And Justin's got a channel as well, 511 Design, so make sure you check that out too. Thanks again for stopping by. Thanks again, Justin. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Oh,